Hey y'all, and welcome to a Geek Freaks Quickie review here. Uh, I am Frank. We have uh, two crossovers coming up, so we don't have a lot of moments to do reviews or really get in-depth with the news. So we wanted to just do this little quick 15-minute review for Sonic. We'll have another one probably coming out tomorrow. That'll be for Bleeding Edge. It's a video game released at, well, during beta. And uh, and then, yeah, on Tuesday we have another episode coming out like normal, but that's going to be a crossover with Ronin Geek Official Podcast. The following week we have another crossover with uh, D from FTO. So we got some cool, fun activities coming up, but we still want to get out there with that Sonic news. So I just got back from watching Sonic. It was my uh, Valentine's activity, I'm sure it was for many of you. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go over some of my favorite things and and kind of give a general grade to this thing. Uh, first and foremost, no spoilers. I'm going to try hard not to spoil anything. And my overall opinion is it was pretty good. I think I'm not the right audience, but I, in general, I did like it. Some of the first moments you'll see is like Paramount stars are actually rings when they're coming in. The title sequence that shows like, you know, like Marvel's title sequence. Sega has their own now and it looked really cool. And the first thing I thought was like, oh my God, please let us get an Altered Beast movie because I would love Altered Beast movie. That's so good. Uh, we get to see Sonic's world. It's pretty cool. And, and I actually do want to explore that more. There are some characters in there that are noticeable if you're a Sonic fan. And uh, uh, one of the big MacGuffins to this is that the rings that, you know, we all know the rings, they actually are used to open up portals. And that's how he gets to Earth. And that's how, like, I guess, like, he, he later on says, like, that's how all advanced species travel is with these portals from the rings. So it kind of gives the rings a whole different meaning. And later on, that'll be one of my cons is I really wish they kind of showed the rings are some sort of his life force. Like, that's such a big deal in the game, and it's something that's so unique to Sonic. And I know all of us Sonic players from the old days know what it's like to have one ring and try not to lose it, you know? So I was really hoping that they would kind of, like, give a little homage to that. But, you know, there is a little one moment where it's kind of the sound, but nothing major. The setting is in Green Hills, which you guys know was the very first zone in the very first Sonic game. And it's the one that has the classic soundtrack to it that, that's so classic Sonic. We're following uh, the sheriff a lot. He's kind of the main character outside of Sonic. His name is Tom. And watching him, I kind of got a vibe pretty early on, actually, of a Dave for the Chipmunks. Like, he has that kind of personality in a way. Like, like in the newer Chipmunk movies. And not so much that he's harking or really punishing Sonic a lot, but they kind of have... He's kind of like that role, almost, you know? In the end, you know, Sonic does something in the military sending Robotnik out there. And Robotnik's played by uh, Jim Carrey, of course. I was worried about Jim Carrey getting back into such a good big role because lately he's been kind of on hiatus. He's really doing a lot of artwork now. And so I was a little bit worried about that. But we did get this like kind of a classic Jim Carrey mixed with something new. So there are moments where I'm like, oh, that's so Ace Ventura. Or I'm like, that's Liar Liar right there. But he has this thing where he like drops into like, I'm evil. And I really like that about this Robotnik is he knows that he's evil. It's a villain that knows that they're the villain. And that's kind of a nice little like, you know, uh, Despicable Me moment. He really has kind of, with even with his tools, like his toys, a, a Despicable Me thing. Overall, the pacing's really quick. But story-wise, I kind of felt like that's where we know for sure it's not meant for uh, maybe old school fans 100% or something like that. This is... A family movie and skews towards the children, and that's perfectly fine. It's just, it's I'm not the target audience, and that's totally fine. There are moments in the story where you're kind of like, well, why would you do that? Sonic is fast. Like, there's, there's so many times where, like, the whole second act, for example, there were countless times where I'm like, just use Sonic. Or why, it, why do you need Sonic? They'll be doing something where it's it could have been E.T. or it could have been anybody there and it didn't need to be Sonic there. Or they were doing things where it's like, yeah, but Sonic's got super speed. You don't need to do this because he could just do that real quick. That kept coming up. And I think if you're a child or, or you know, or you're just there for the fun, really. All of us are. But like for the younger audience, they're kind of like, oh, you know, that, oh, that's cool. Look how he ran fast to do this one thing. And yet you're kind of like, yeah, but that's kind of like that's, there's plot holes left and right. So let's let's look at some of my cons. I know I got those written down here in the cons uh, quite a bit here. Robotnik, his tech all looks really good, but his gloves look really really kind of lame. There, he controls a lot of his robots with that. That's kind of a side thing, but so yeah. So a lot of the reasonings behind things is lazy feeling. In the second act, there was basically one. There was moments where where Sonic wasn't needed, uh, where they were doing like 
escapes or fights or something like that. And they would switch it up to where Tom was in charge of doing them. And I'm like, I mean, you got Sonic right there, right? In the end for the story, though, the reason that I just am not going to give it too high of a score, it felt like it was kind of cookie cutter and very predictable Moments where you're like, yeah, of course, they're going to end up here. Of course, that's going to happen. And again, a lack of references. Like, there's so many times where I was just like, make the rings, reference his life somehow. Hey, this is a really good moment to play this certain song. But there were countless times where it was kind of like, come on, you could just do one more thing and you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just could have referenced something. Let's look into the CGI because everybody was worried about the CGI. They totally changed Sonic and totally a great job. Sonic looks awesome. I kept comparing him to Detective Pikachu. And, and throughout the movie, I was doing that because really, I think Detective Pikachu is a better version of this movie in the fact that it's like taken from a video game and you're put into this world that's not necessarily following the story of the video game. But I think, yeah, I think Detective Pikachu overall did better. Uh, but yeah, it looks like that. It's very good. The fur is really nice. The eyes, the green in the eyes is really, really good. Uh, the speed lightning looks awesome coming off of him. And then all of Robotnik's tech looks really good. So... My one complaint on that is that I wish that they looked more animal-esque, but they didn't do that. They actually made them look like eggs, which, you know, that makes sense. But in general, yeah, all the CGI I thought was really solid. And that was the part that I went in, like, expecting to see flaws because they worked so quickly to change over Sonic. They actually had to delay the film a bit. Uh, but no, it looks fantastic. And I really liked it. The soundtrack, there were moments where I was like, this is a really good song. Like, in the beginning, they had Super Sonic from Queen. That's my favorite band, so I was happy with that. And of course, you're going to have Super Sonic in there. There were many, like with the score, there was many like upbeat songs that were transitioned into tense and exciting that you go back and forth. And it actually, while I was listening to it, I was like, this for some reason is reminding me of Small Soldiers. I don't know if you guys remember that movie, but it's a classic one with the toys that are fighting a war and it's just, it's great. But yeah, the score is like, man, this is for some, it's bringing back Small Soldiers to me right now. So I thought it was like, okay, there's got to be something there, you know, if it's doing that. At the end, we did have a couple bars that were just like green hill zone i was like mm, that's what i needed right there that's i needed that to wrap this thing up so that was really cool uh casting wise uh we had i can't remember his name but anyways the, the guy that played sonic he did a really good job i kind of wish they did like this more sassy joking around like i'm cool all the time thing that this sonic had a lot more insecurities which played in well for the entire story but i i, I kind of wanted that like that tap in my shoe and i'm i'm cool like all the time like you look back as a 90s kid, you had Mario and you had Sonic. And Sonic was like, man, he's just rad. You know, <laughs> if you're a 90s kid, you're familiar with that term rad. But yeah, he was just rad. And this one kind of felt like, yeah, he's cool. But, you know, he's also kind of like struggling. It just, it was one kind of par down. And I think, you know, maybe in this world, we have too many rad characters. If you think of Deadpool and maybe like Harley Quinn, which was last week, maybe it's good that we don't have so many rad ass characters. But yeah, I just kind of felt like he was missing something there. Uh, the relationship between him and, and Tom, I think, was very good. It was predictable, but it was a very good relationship. I think Tom uh, uh, did a well, did well, like playing off of the CGI character. You, I never saw missed eye lines. I'm always looking for missed eye lines when I'm looking at a full CGI character. I didn't see any of them, and it bugs the heck out of me when I see those. But they did a really good job. He did an excellent job. Uh, but yeah, overall, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give this. This one a score of 76. So it feels a little low for some people but i think the reason that i have it at 76 is because i'm just not the right audience for others i'm sure this movie's higher but my personal score is going to be 76 and i'm trying to and a lot of it's a story a lot of it is just so many plot holes and so many missed opportunities i really was hoping for more references it this is not the movie with a lot of references i was kind of hoping for like a wreck it ralph basically right where wreck it ralph was in, and, and sonic's in that where you're constantly getting pushes from different references and i was just like man i can't wait to see that it just wasn't enough of those, and I'm fine with that. It's They're setting up a movie franchise that I think is going to do great uh, that is surrounded around Sonic the character, not so much Sonic the games, and that's totally fine. We've had many cartoons that are that way, and, you know, they're, they're their own thing, and sometimes I like them, sometimes they're not great, but sometimes I do like them. Uh, so I'm excited to see what we get out of this. Uh, 76, solid movie. If you have kids, take them out to go see this movie. Totally great for the whole family. Uh, if you're just in it for the, the nostalgia, you're going to be missing something, but it's still totally worth the watch, guys. Quick review for Bleeding Edge. This is a beta weekend for its closed beta weekend. It's a game that I, I first was going into it thinking like, oh, yeah, it's going to be a new Overwatch. 
Uh, but it doesn't quite feel like that. I'm getting a weird like League of Legends feel to it. What do you? How do you feel like overall the feel of the game? I think it's a mixture of both. Um, I feel the gameplay is more. It's kind of tough because you got capturing stuff like Overwatch, but it has like when you're moving and stuff and exploring on the map. It's it's got this League of Legends feel. Let me break down what the game is. Okay, let me do that first. Mm-hmm. So you you hop into a map. I think it's four v four. Uh, the ones that we've been playing so far, and you're either capturing points or you're collecting these um, jars and trying to turn them in, which is kind of unique. That actually kind of feels like a League of Legends, or not a League of Legends, um, a World of Warcraft Battleground in that sense. I've seen something like uh, that. Also, uh, let's think about also feel of um, Heroes of the Storm because of the objectives. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Heroes of the Storm, yeah. Uh, and so you're going in and you're 4v4, four four, four four, and there is like DPS kind of characters, healer type characters, and then a couple tank characters. Uh, you don't have to specifically have one of each role like you currently do in the main play stuff Overwatch, but you can tell quickly when you don't have a healer how bad things go. Or same thing with the oh, tank. Yeah. What do you feel about the way that the uh, teams are built? Do you think that the, the tank seems very useful, the healer seems very useful? What do you think about all that? Well, it, it does, but it, from from our experience, I think early is that a lot of people are not grasping this the the gameplay of this. Or how it's supposed to work, yeah. and uh, it is frustrating at times. So that's why you know you go back to Overwatch. You're like, oh my gosh, I love roll queue because it takes me off when everybody just wants to play damage. It's like, yeah, I would love to play damage, but I mean, I want to win also. So uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see if maybe that's something that they'll add on later. That was a really good uh, change to the game when they did that because uh, I remember beforehand, yeah, everybody would go DPS, and then you're kind of like, oh, not enough tanks. It would always warn you that, but you're like, nah, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then once they forced in this roll queue thing, you're like, oh, holy crap, it's so much better. <laughs> you didn't realize yeah. how how badly you actually did need everything. So I think that would actually really benefit this game quite a bit. Uh, Characters-wise, is there any characters that are really standing out to you so far? Any play styles you're really liking? You know, um, I, I did want to uh, bring up about the characters. I think the characters look awesome, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, they're like... Um, just a bunch of junk rats. I mean, junk rats. Yeah, I kind of feel like a, a Badlands feel to it. You know? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, post apocalyptic kind of like li- surviving on your own. Yeah. Um, who? What I like damage wise, played little. Um, I like um, Nag Hogger. Uh, he's the guy with the guitar doing doing damage. Yeah. But then as a tank, I haven't done much support yet. But who I'm really interested in is uh, Miko. Kind of okay. like that. Um, with the. I don't know what she kind of looks like. Remember, the girl with the red hair. And then uh, for Tank, I like Buttercup. She's kind of fun. I like pulling people back. Uh, she has this rope where you could throw out to somebody and pull them back. I really do like that. Yeah, she's the one that's like riding on a big wheel the whole time, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what what other tank abilities does she have that makes her a tank? Uh, she has. So what I like to do is after you pull somebody, you put this pool of maybe this poison down on the ground. So it kind of like... You could punch it, p- uh, put it down on the ground real quick, pull them in, and while you're being pulled in and they're stuck, they kind of absorb damage at the same time. Um, and then as a, for her special, I've only used one special so far. She she just boosts all her stats, so um, I think she gets an increase in health. Yeah. So kind of hard, not kind of hard to kill, of course. Yeah, she. I, I noticed that she's a pain. There's a guy that also like I don't know the names yet, of course, but there is that mm-hmm. dude that sort of wears a cowboy hat and spins in circles. He feels a little bit too overpowered. Oh, hell bastard! <laughs> yeah, uh, that bastard. Oh, <laughs> yeah. When he gets into the gets into the area, you're just like all right, back up a little bit or pin him down. Uh, he he seems a little disruptive, which is you know I think that might they actually might tune him down a little bit. Uh, I've been yeah. playing mostly healers so far. For the most part, nobody else is. They're either not playing healers or when they do play healers, they play them as a DPS. And we've seen that a few times where they're off trying to like chase them yeah. down. And you could tell when I, when you do play healer, they just do not have the damage output for that. So yeah. it's unfortunate. But I've been playing the arcade healer. I can't remember his name, but uh, he's sitting in a – he's like Professor X oh, chair. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he has some direct healing. He has some AOE healing. He has the wall. If I can master that wall, I'll be good because – Oh, my God. That I keep annoying. messing it up. But it is very mm-hmm. effective. Uh, but, yeah. So – Every character feels very distinct. The big plus to this game, one of the, again, the things that are leaning more towards League of Legends is the melee seem to have a better time. Like, it's not so clunky. In Overwatch, I would I would argue that the melee are a little bit clunkier than this. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, 
One thing also, though, I do like how the targeting is kind of automatic when you're throwing stuff. I know on mm-hmm. Overwatch you really have to aim, and then League Legends you have to really click. But if you could just uh, play it as a tank, as long as you're in, kind of in that direction, it'll pull them. Now, does that say something about skill-based? Yeah, maybe not as skilled yeah. players can master this move, whatever. But I do like the I do like the melee better than Overwatch and uh, League because it really feels like I'm. I don't know. I guess there's more of it, and it is a big part of the game. Uh, Overwatch, you're like, okay, cool. I'm either going to punch you or I have a bunch of guns, and I'm going to shoot you up close. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's only select characters that have melee um, in Overwatch, and one just on top of my head is just Genji. Yeah. Here, everyone does melee on top of their moves. There, There is a couple... Well, there is a couple of ranged classes, and I've played them a couple times, yeah. yep. but they don't feel as rewarding. I actually don't feel like I do as much damage when and you know mm. playing like a ninja that's jumping in your face and and it's like you know all about ambushing and escaping that's another thing too is is everybody has this a dodge ability and that creates this weird kind of fast pace you must always be moving feel where i think like yeah. sometimes like it, it kind of feels like for example if we're going to go back to overwatch it feels like playing a tracer where all tracer okay. if you have three charges of your dodge you're not playing her right you should always be sitting at two uh and, mm. and so I kind of feel like that's how this game is supposed to be played. Like I should always yeah. be down a dash because I should be always moving. Uh, yeah. And it was, that was kind of a, that's going to take some skill cap to get, to get used to, but it's definitely cool. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the pacing? Do you feel like it's a little bit quicker paced? Um, it's a little, I don't know. I, I honestly, I feel like it's the same thing. You're, when you die, you're going to try to run up to where we're at, wherever the group is on the map. Um, like pre like uh League of Legends and like Overwatch, mm-hmm. uh, Dota, whatever you're trying to keep up to it. Um, you know I didn't feel a difference. How about you? Uh, yeah, to me it just feels so much faster paced. It, it, like I said, it really? feels okay. it feels like a tracer type of thing instead of playing for for an example somebody like Hanzo where you're really kind of pacing and and you're really flowing smoothly and just quiet in the background. It feels like you're that tracer. You're uh maybe okay. like a uh, what's the other one that I play all the time and I can't remember her name Sombra. Uh, somebody like okay. that, where you're just, if you're not moving, you're failing, you know, so it kind of feels like okay. that. All right. All right. So I like that. Uh, do you think the third person is better than the first person, or do you think this game? Oh, uh, man, I'm a huge third person fan, too. I normally and am, yeah. yeah. Th- it just has a different view, because I feel like instead of over the shoulder, it's a little lower to me than yeah, it, no- normal ones. It's like and off first, to the side, less lucky. than over the shoulder, right? Yeah, yeah. And I do like the fact that I can see my characters. They're so now like this is like when skins come out, right? So in right. Overwatch, of course, I want to see what my character looks like. Now, if we're playing third person base, I'm more excited to earn these skins. That's true. Yeah, in Overwatch, that's one of the big things is that you can like actually check out the weapon when you get a new skin mm-hmm. because when you're actually playing, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the actual weapon yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Uh, in this game, yeah, you're gonna be able to enjoy the entire skin. That's a good point. I think aiming wise, though, I think I like the first person better. It, yeah, it, it does ruin your movements. I don't know. Do you think that the third person versus first person affects the pacing and the aiming and stuff like that, or are you just excited for the skins? Um, am I excited for skins? <laughs> 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 no, because with the first person, it does feel like you're in the, in the battle, um, and everything's in your face. With the third person, you get an overall. You can kind of see everything going on around you. If I'm if I'm up close, uh, combat and Overwatch, I don't know what's going on behind me. But yeah. here, I can kind of get a little little heads up of what's coming what's coming to me yeah and, and the further we're talking about it the more i'm actually kind of comparing it to world of warcraft battlegrounds okay i, I would okay. i would really kind of pitch it it's like if if you're thinking of like a demon hunter that kind of faster moving class a demon mm-hmm. hunter it really kind of mm-hmm. matches well uh so yeah I, the more i'm looking at it too i'm thinking of heroes of storm just with the objectives yeah that's true uh, yeah and then the mounts too i mean it's kind of like league legends also well not League Legends, actually, but yeah, you have the mounts where you could go up to the mount, map or wherever there, anything's at. That's definitely going to be. Here. That's definitely going to be a spot for a skin right there, right? Did you feel that right away? Like, okay, we're going to be get, getting different Custom versions of mounts. Right? Yeah, you would think yeah. so. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah, the company behind this is Bleeding Edge. They've done Hellblade. Can you think of anything else that Bleeding Edge has done? I think it's just Hellblade. Uh, no, no. Um, you mean Ninja Theory? Ninja Theory. That's what I mean. Yeah, um, they do uh, the, uh, oh my, uh, my god, that freaking Ninja game. Ninja Gaiden, don't they? No, yeah. no way. No. no. There's, did oh, they, are you serious? I'm, wrong. I'm Googling it right now, man. I'm checking it out too. Because that would be amazing. Ninja Gaiden is amazing. 
crazy hard too. Um, they did Devil May Cry, the DMC one, Hellblade, uh, Heavenly, Heavenly Sword. Heavenly Sword, that's a good game. Yeah, that's one. Um, I'm trying to see what else. Maybe they didn't do uh, Disney Infinity. I actually enjoyed that game. Oh man, I wish that game just didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of more. Kung Fu Chaos was a lot of fun, and nobody played it. That's one of their early games. I actually bought that because it was cheap. Mm-hmm. It's a fighter. Mm-hmm. It was it was like a ninja, funny ninja version of Smash Brothers. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm wrong. What am I what am I thinking of? It was uh they did a de- uh, Dead or Alive does um also Yeah, the DMC one. I got it wrong. Yeah. Uh yeah, but I mean that Hellblade is so good. Uh, you know, I just I'm loving that game. I'm we've talked about the yeah. past, I'm afraid to play any farther because I don't mm-hmm. want to die forever. But uh it's yeah. really good and I'm excited for the sequel for it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into scoring this game. Let's say out of a hundred. Oh, um, wow. What do you think? A uh, hundred uh, those crystals we have to collect. Okay, a hundred crystals we have to collect that we don't know the names of. We don't know the names of these things yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brand new game, guys. Um, We're in beta here. <laughs> yeah. A uh, hundred crystals, huh? I'm going to do... Uh, I'm gonna do 70 because of how because I, I didn't know we were getting a beta first. I thought this was gonna be the legit game. So when you told me to download a beta, I'm like, what the fuck? I've been waiting for how long for this? Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna do 70 because of the lack of what they're offering us of the amount of characters. You obviously don't get skins right now. You only get these mods to upgrade. Now, I don't know if it's upgrade your character, but more of changing the character play style. Um, so I'm gonna do 70. 70. That's fair. Crystals. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm gonna actually was gonna go around low seventies as well, so I'll just stick with seventy with you. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it, there's so much more wanting, and I'm hoping that this beta is only just in that one play style, and that we're actually gonna get so much more. I mean, there everybody's gonna compare them against Overwatch, and Overwatch right oh, now yeah. currently has PVE coming out, and if you're just now coming out with the original Overwatch, you're gonna be left behind. So I'm hoping that we get a PVE aspect because I think this game with some PVE would be a blast. Especially like some of the faster paced ninja characters and stuff like that. Like, oh man, yeah. give me the ability to bounce off walls. I'm good. Yeah. So that'll be good. All right, guys, that'll be it on our normal podcast release day. We have a crossover with uh, Ronan Geek Official Podcast. It was so much fun to do. Uh, so uh, stick along with us. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Geek Freaks Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Geek Freaks Pod. We're also on Facebook, Instagram. You can email us. We have our Patreon and a store. All those links are in the description. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.